Here to teach you how to be a buzzkill, this is Art Explains. Okay, quick survey. Raise your hand if you like mosquitoes. Well, I don't see any hands. Wait, you in the back, are you? No? Okay. There are plenty of reasons to hate mosquitoes. Despite the fact that they drink human blood on occasion and the noise they make when they fly into your ear, mosquitoes are just plain dangerous. How dangerous? Mosquitoes kill more humans each year than any other animal. The death toll is currently around a million people per year. And by some estimates, the total number of humans who have been killed across history by mosquitoes exceeds 40 billion, with a B. Some scholars go as far as to say that mosquitoes have killed half of all humans who have ever lived. Yikes. Technically, the mosquitoes don't directly kill anyone. That would be impressive. I've got eyes on the target! Open fire, boys! Leonard still hasn't taken the safety off! Well, Darwin isn't pulling his weight! What more do you want from me? Instead, they serve as vectors for diseases, and there's no shortage of diseases to choose from. Mosquitoes can transmit malaria, chikungunya, yellow fever, dengue fever, West Nile virus, lymphatic filariasis, tularemia, several types of encephalitis, and others. Mosquitoes are also responsible for some heartworms and dogs, and several types of life-threatening horse diseases. Fortunately, we've got something called scientific advancement on our side. Bug spray can refer to insecticides, which actually kill the insects, or to insect repellent, which merely keeps the buggers away. Let's focus on the second. When choosing a bug spray, you want something that is both safe to use and effective. That might sound like an obvious statement, and it is, but the marketing of products can make it difficult to choose. Here in the United States, there are two labels that an insect repellent can earn from the Environmental Protection Agency. There's EPA registered and EPA approved. EPA registered means that the EPA has evaluated the product entirely, and research shows that the product is both safe to use and effective when you follow the instructions on the label. EPA approved, on the other hand, merely means that the product has been shown to be safe to use. The EPA does not investigate the effectiveness of these products, and the manufacturer saves money this way. The catch is that they can only contain certain ingredients found on a list published by the EPA. Here's some of the stuff from that list. You'll probably recognize citronella, which is a common ingredient in candles, bracelets, and sprays, and there's over a dozen kinds of plant oils on the list, and dried blood is... deeply troubling. I looked into it, and apparently dried blood is an ingredient in some rabbit repellents, and somehow got carried over to the insect repellent approved list. I couldn't find any bug sprays that actually contain dried blood, but according to this list, if the manufacturer wanted to put it in, they could. Weird. But how do these repellents even work? To answer that question, first we need to learn how mosquitoes find us. A mosquito is attracted to many things. Carbon dioxide exhaled by a person when they breathe is a huge factor. Sweat also attracts mosquitoes, especially if the person sweating has type O blood. An estimated 85% of people emit evidence of their blood type in their sweat, and mosquitoes can use this information to choose a preferred meal. One of the simplest mechanisms for bug spray, then, is to cover up the smells. The most effective products go a step beyond this, though, and also choose scents that mosquitoes dislike. It's a simple burrito metaphor. Think about it. If you can't find the burrito, how can you possibly eat it? And even if you do find it, if it's coated in some kind of foul-smelling chemical, you would think twice about chomping down. There are also synthetic chemicals, such as DEET, the most common synthetic chemical, that seem to affect mosquitoes by confusing their senses. Surprisingly, even though DEET has been commercially available for over 50 years, people still disagree about how exactly it works. But regardless of how it works, it works really well. The problem is that it can be harsh on the skin and eyes, and it's harmful if swallowed. In large concentrations, it can even melt plastic. So, if you want to avoid that, what are your other options? Citronella works well in experiments for a while, but wears off quickly and only works in environments with very low wind speeds. And because it is so short-lived, it is not the best choice. Going back to that list of plant-based oils, consumers report mixed results. Soybean oil seems to be pretty promising, but it still doesn't last as long as DEET. Bracelets, candles, and scented body lotions have been shown to offer very limited protection and are not recommended. When it comes down to really heavy protection, DEET is by far the best option. Why bother with chemicals at all when you can just get that app that emits sonic waves or whatever? Sure, if you want to buy something that doesn't work and is potentially dangerous. Say what? Sonic emitters and related devices claim to be able to repel mosquitoes by mimicking the sounds of nature that mosquitoes don't like. These devices have been shown in studies to not work. At all. In fact, in 2002, a court order issued by the FTC demanded that a leading producer of these devices stop making false claims about their effectiveness. 
Companies in the past had marketed these devices to be placed near baby buggies and strollers. Because these products give the false impression that the child is protected, the guardians are less likely to take the proper precautions against insects. And babies are seriously susceptible to mosquito-borne illnesses. I'm not much of a businessman, but as a general rule of thumb, if your product is leading to the death of children, you should not market that product. And if you're wondering how the effectiveness of bug sprays are tested in the first place, the answer is both simple and unnerving. According to EPA guidelines, subjects should expose their forearms to the mosquitoes in a test cage to establish their attractiveness. And then you can write on your resume that you are bitten for a living. I hope you've learned a bit about your options when dealing with the deadly little bloodsuckers. If you'd like to learn more, check out the links below. Take it away, Lucy! Hey everybody, Lucy here. Thanks for watching Art Explains. If you liked what you saw, be sure to click on one of these links to subscribe and learn more about the show. Otherwise, I put some episodes up here for you if you want to watch those. Great, thanks. Bye. Fall back! Fall back! They have us surrounded, Sarge! It's been a pleasure serving with you, boys!